solar power is fast becoming quite popular among South Africans who are frustrated with load shedding. Now, according to the South African Photovoltaic Industry Association, solar PV providers receive up to 1,700 applications from households every single day with about 75 daily installations. Let's unpack the story further. We're joined by the association spokesperson, Frank Spencer, on our video link this morning. Frank, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. I mean, would yeah, you say, morning, yeah, good morning. Would you say that it's, it's, it's fair to say that it's the most affordable way of getting off the grid, solar energy? Certainly in terms of a long-term investment, that is true. Over the life of, a, of the solar installation, the average cost of electricity for the electricity it produces is the lowest of any of the technologies that are available. And it's um, the kind of mitigating measure against load shedding that has exploded in various parts of the country over corporate South Africa and private individuals as well. That's correct, yes. Although it is worth noting that solar by itself doesn't give protection against load shedding. Mm -hmm. But what we've seen particularly in the last year is that there's been a huge ramp up of the deployment of batteries together with solar so that that basically gives you both cheap energy from the solar panels as well as protection against load shedding from the batteries. Okay, you're going to have to explain it to us um, this morning, Frank. What does it mean if I have um, solar panels installed in my home with a backup battery um, and how that helps mitigate against higher stages of load shedding? Sure. So with just the solar and, the, and a solar installation and the grid supply, they work together to provide electricity and the solar would subsidize the supply that is coming from the grid from either Eskom or the municipality that supplies. Mm -hmm. The challenge with that is that if there is load shedding, the solar plant cannot produce electricity by itself. It needs to work with something else that actually creates the grid uh, if the grid falls away. So this is why people have been adding batteries, because the batteries provide the backup energy to actually then create a local grid. Right. Now, you could put batteries in just the batteries, and that would give you protection against load shedding. But once the batteries have run flat, you're obviously back to not having electricity. And this is where the real benefit of coupling the two together comes, as that the solar would then allow the batteries to remain charged or to charge during the day, so that you have that backup power for the evenings and mornings when most households need it the most. Mm. So, so essentially, um, with the solar panels and the batteries, um, once load shedding hits, you have a bit of protection insofar as powering up your essential appliances, so TVs, uh, your Wi-Fi, for example, but n obviously not your big, not your big, big appliances. So that's a function of the size of an installation. So generally, most people are installing exactly as you've described, systems large enough to see them through a two- to four-hour load-shedding event, but to power up their essential loads, yes. Given what you've just said about how uh, solar actually works together with the national grid, um, are you saying that it's, it's impossible or, or perhaps just difficult to get off the grid entirely? It, it's certainly not impossible. It just tends to come at a cost, a significant cost, rather than just powering your essential loads. Although electricity made from solar panels has become very inexpensive, batteries remain quite expensive. So when you put the two together, if you are looking to go off-grid or to supply almost all of your electricity from a solar battery system, that can be quite a significant investment compared to just having enough for load shedding. Yeah. I want to talk about how this, um, how this sort of flourishing in the solar power uh, sector in South Africa has actually protected us from higher stages of load shedding. We talked about, you know, mega corporations and their use of solar power. Has that actually meant that we could have been experiencing higher sta stages of load shedding now if that was not the case? Uh, indeed, I think that is the case. We've seen in the last five to ten years that perhaps four to five gigawatts of privately deployed solar has been installed. And although that's only producing electricity during the day, it's the equivalent of, of between one to two load shedding events. Hmm. Because basically Eskom needs to produce less electricity during the day when the sun is shining and can use that excess to charge up their own big batteries, which are basically the pump yeah. hydro, 
and they then use that to smooth out the load shedding between the day and the night. So, so the battle now is to get more South Africans and more people in South Africa onto something like solar power, right? To try and help businesses survive, um, to try and help households that um, need electricity, in some cases a as a life-saving tool, those people who are on oxygen, for example. But it's the affordability issue that's stopping us from doing that. And that's right, because buying such a system is, is an investment, basically, in a sense, buying 25 years' worth of electricity up front. Hmm. But I think what is quite exciting about the South African market is that we have seen the financial side of the market maturing quite rapidly in the last couple of years with different products emerging for different types of customers. So whether you are a super large mine looking to invest in a really large uh, solar plant, there is finance available for that. But right down at the homeowner level, there are, are emerging and still emerging products from banks and private financiers for homeowners also to purchase their own solar systems. Yeah, and the president himself talking about uh, solar subsidies for households as well. That will go some way um, in helping um, those people who are prevented from entering the market from doing just that. Well, that's certainly my hope, that the subsidy would be targeted on supporting those who don't have access to finance in order to be able to install their own solar systems. What's your advice if, if you know, I, I want to sort of start on the solar journey? Is there a way of me getting in and starting small and then building from there? Correct. So what, one of the nice things about the technology, both for the solar and the batteries, is it is very modular. So you can basically start with a small system and grow that over time if that is the route you want to go, yes. Yeah. Um, just a parting shot from you this morning, Frank. How do you see the sector growing in the next, just given what we're experiencing uh, insofar as load shedding is concerned and our power crisis, how do you see the sector expanding in the next five, ten years? I think we are just going to continue to see exponential growth. And what's super exciting about that is the job creation that's coming with it. We've seen maybe 30,000 new jobs created in the last five to ten years. And now that the cap on large projects has been removed, we are going to now see the mining sector and big industrial clients building massive solar projects. And all of this together, from the super big projects to the small, is definitely going to help contribute to resolving the challenges with electricity supply. Absolutely. Frank Spencer, let me thank you for your time this morning. Frank is the spokesperson for the SA Photovoltaic Industry Association as we talk about the expansion, particularly of solar energy in light of our energy crisis.